Paul Cezanne is sometimes credited as the father of modern art, but he did not have very strong figure drawing skills, but he didn't much care either. It is this attitude that made him a favorite among modern painters. Fast forward to Pablo Picasso. He turned his models into flat cartoonish schematics. Henri Matisse used his models as home decor accessories. Now, I cannot say that any of these gentlemen are on the autistic spectrum, but did you see the eyes? A clue for me is how the artist treats the eyes. If the eyes are dimmed, averted, shaded, violated or voided in some way, made cartoonish or exaggerated, this suggests to me that the artist may be uncomfortable with direct eye contact. For the hyperlogical autistic, there is perhaps another modern way of looking at figures. One can trace the sensibility back to artist Giorgio de Chirico, who started an early 20th century modernist art movement called Scuola Metaphysica, or Metaphysical School. De Chirico was influenced by the Kantian metaphysics of the German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer. In his artwork, de Chirico freezes moments in space and time under a blazing sun, a consequence of this uncovering of reality, or showing the unreality behind reality, is that figures take on this quality of unreality. They are portrayed as architectural forms or as distant, unmoving shadows. All this makes sense when you have autism. Autistics often have difficulty reading body language and sometimes suffer a form of face blindness or an inability to read visual or nonverbal cues. They feel excluded from the layered world of intimacy that others take for granted. I had a friend in graduate school. In fact, she was my only friend within the painting program. Knowing what I know now, I feel confident in saying she was also on the spectrum. She liked the paintings of Baltus a lot. I liked the paintings of Baltus. One always feels like he or she is interrupting a scene in a Baltus painting. Sometimes that scene is disturbing or simply indecipherable. The figures either do not interact or the interaction arises only because it's intrusive. After artists such as Seurat, Picasso, and de Chirico, the artists felt less compelled to provide the human figure with specific concrete reality, and thereby less specific humanity was also required. If the humanity remains in some sense, then it becomes abstract, cold, or unsympathetic. It is rarely intimate, and more times, figures resemble automatons, cartoons, gross caricatures, or schematics. I call this empathy in the abstract, where for autistic individuals who lack the natural wiring for empathy, find it easier to empathize with the impersonal ideal of people rather than concrete individuals who may deserve compassion at the moment it is solicited. Of the artists who continue to paint figures, men and women become facades, and there are practically no depictions of children. Isn't it strange that there are so few children in modern art? Is it because modern artists had so few children? Or if they did have children, were they ignored? Or did the mother get the children in the separation? I think few children in modern art where the modern artist could paint anything they wanted, says something. Children in paintings are almost always depicted in life-affirming scenes. And life affirmation in other forms, such as compassionate portrayals of intimate acquaintances, well, they are just not that many. There may be portraits galore, but compassionate is not a word that comes to mind when you describe them. Portraits are always more about the eccentricity of the artist than the humanity of the sitter.